In this video, I'm going to present my Benchmark Division C tower. This build isn't meant to be a template or a definitive design, but rather to show what a competitive tower might look like. One of the most useful things you can learn when working on your own designs and builds is to know what scores are possible. Historically, teams would have to go to competitions in person and pay careful attention to the best builds to gain these types of insights. I still recommend doing that, by the way, as that it's a great way to learn about your local competition. That being said, many teams are not fortunate enough to be able to go to highly competitive invitationals, and even fewer get to see high quality builds if they do. This video is meant to show just enough information to be a replacement for that type of experience. In future videos, I will explain in great detail my design approach and optimization journey on how I achieved this build, but for now I will only show the overall tower mass and results. Some teams may only want to use this limited information, while others may want more detailed information to try and replicate this build. This approach should provide options for both. Here you can see the tower on the scale right before testing, which simulates the check-in process at a competition. The total mass is 5.950 grams. Next is the tower on the testing stand right before the test. This event is a spectator event at competitions, so while you can't take pictures or videos of other people's devices, you can pay close attention and take notes if you'd like. If you are observing other devices that are similar to yours, pay attention to things that are both similar and different to yours. Here I am highlighting the fact that you can visually see that the top of this tower is obviously not as wide as the loading block. By just looking, you can estimate the size of the top pretty accurately by comparing it to the block. Based on your experience, if you are watching this event at a competition, try to make predictions for how you think other towers will do and why, and then compare that to what really happens. Here is the live video of the simulated competition test. Because I wanted to make sure I recorded a failure for this tower, I put over 20 kilograms of sand in the autoloader. For real competitions, that would be limited to just over 15 kilograms. One interesting thing to pay attention to when watching other people test their device is to evaluate their loading strategy. You can tell from the visuals and sound that the entire loading process only takes about 44 seconds. Not all auto loaders are this fast, but it's generally a good idea to limit the amount of time your device is under heavy load. Another thing you might notice is that I don't have anyone stabilizing the bucket. If you load the sand gradually, there will be almost no sway in the bucket and the stabilizer is generally not needed. It doesn't hurt to have one of course, but don't worry if you have to test alone. You can see that the total mass held was 18.570 kilograms and would have easily qualified for the full load bonus. That means that the final score for this device would be 20,000 divided by 5.950 or 3,361. I fully expect many teams to be able to beat this score throughout the season, but I consider this a very good score and would likely be competitive in most competitions. If you want to achieve this score with a non-bonus build, the equivalent tower that held 15 kilograms would be 15,000 divided by 3,361, or roughly 4.46 grams. Here is the high speed footage of the failure. The thing we're always looking for is the very first thing that breaks. Anything after that first failure mode doesn't really matter as the device is no longer intact. I'll freeze the footage right before it breaks, and you can see that one of the cross members in the first two layers of the tower are failing first. As I continue the footage, you can see that with no cross bracing support, the legs fail at the bottom and there is no going back. At least with the high speed footage, I get a few more seconds of enjoyment watching it get destroyed, and the three plus hours it took to build seem more worthwhile. In the next series of videos, I will do a deeper dive into how I approach this design and then some of the challenges I encountered when actually building it. Thanks for watching and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.